Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Building a Leadership Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki C., all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Super excited to continue to bring amazing entrepreneurs to our platform to share their journey to entrepreneurship and giving us some gems and writer downers and all those good things that we need to continue to grow, flourish, and live in our purpose. Purposefully, um, without further ado, we are going to get our guest on here. We are um, so excited to have her. Met her through a community, and we had a great conversation. Love what she's about and what she's doing. We're going to meet Wendy Watson, a spiritual therapist and CEO at TBR Spiritual Health, dedicated to guiding individuals through transformative journeys towards healing, personal, and spiritual growth with a focus of helping people overcome the trauma of divorce, cultivate healthy relationships, and address a range of mental and emotional challenges. Wendy is committed to empowering her clients to reclaim their inner peace and fulfillment. Without further ado, let's get this a lovely woman on here. Wendy, how Hi. are you? I am fantastic. How are you? I am well. So happy to have you. Thank you for mm-hmm. joining our bomb global family here at buildingaleadershipmindset.com. Um, we are super excited uh, to have you here on the podcast and to share who you are, what you do, and how do you serve. But we'll get to that. First, tell us, Who is Wendy and what upbringing did you have? How did you enter into your space of greatness? Tell us that journey, what struggles, all of that good stuff. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So many, right? As most healers, most people do. So I was raised in an Orthodox Christian home. Um, So very biblical. My parents divorced when I was eight. So as an empath and a healer, that was very traumatic for me. It made me feel like they destroyed my family, right? As um, many children feel when their parents get divorced to the point where it has blocked out my memory prior to eight years old. And I just haven't made the decision yet to go back and retrieve them. So (laughs) that might be coming soon. (laughs) Um, Which led me to be very angry as a child and completely inconsiderate. And after the divorce, my mom felt so guilty for the divorce that she then spoiled us. So let's combine a very angry child who's emotional and doesn't know how to deal with emotions with selfishness. And let's see if she can build some relationships. Yeah, that doesn't work. Right. My mom told me that I would literally just walk into a room, walk up to somebody, say what I needed to say, put them in tears, turn around and walk away and not think anything about it. And I also felt like in order to speak my truth, I needed to say it how I thought it, (laughs) which we all know at this point is not a great idea. (laughs) Not at all. So that led me into, so then they both got remarried to horrific families. My stepmom tried to um, put a wedge between my dad and his kids, me and my sister, which she succeeded for a while. And my mom married somebody that not only he stole from his mom, his kids stole from him, who stole from their grandma. Like it was just a mess. So I didn't have the best role model. So what did I do? I fell into the same pattern and I, found two ex-husbands, not just one. I decided to go for two that were narcissistic, um, alcoholics, addicts, you know, emotionally, verbally abusive. So after my second divorce and losing a child, Mm -hmm. I decided to go on my spiritual journey and like, what am I doing? Why am I making these decisions? Why am I collecting the people in my community? Why am I collecting this type of person? 
And it started out with doing a lot of energy work, uh, using a book called Energy Medicine by Dr. Donna Eden. And at the time I went, I, so in 2009, I had gone from corporate America doing accounting to massage therapy and a sales paycheck. So let's just add all of that together. And then in 2015, when I finally was starting my journey and I realized like the importance, we don't realize how much our body holds on to. And I'm not just talking about like, there's the physical body, but our energy holds on to every single experience, every single word, the energy of all of that stuff. And by clearing out the energy, all of my energy systems really opened up a whole new side of me and just completely changed my world and started incorporating it more and more into my massage business and all the spiritual tools that were coming up for me. And in uh, October of 21, I got called to close my business in Phoenix after, what had it been, 11 years, and move up to Denver, where I'd never been, didn't know anybody, didn't have a job, and didn't have a plan to just start all over and rebrand. Mm. And so I did because that's how strong my faith is. And a year later, year and a half later, here I am, an author, a speaker, a spiritual therapist, getting almost a client a week, new client a week, and talking to people all over the world. Wow. Wow. So much to really unpack here. Um, first of all, thank you for sharing your story here um, because I can 100,000% agree that our listeners can relate to some or even all of this, right? Mm -hmm. The type of families that we are born into um, their baggage that we sometimes carry into our adulthood, our feelings and emotions about that and not having the tools on how to handle those, how to shift those, how to replace those, you know, all those things. Um, so thank you so much again for illuminating these topics that we tend to try to steer away from. But even with all that, you have to have built your own leadership mindset to actually activate all those emotions and say, and ask ourselves, what can I do? How can I do it? And what am I going to do about it? So tell us a little bit about how did that mindset build and what were the things you had to shift? Like, what did you identify when oh, you were making those decisions? Goodness. Um who there's a lot there so really i had to seriously distance myself from my family that was first and foremost because a lot of the bad habits that i had and i do call them habits because you can choose to change them whenever you want and you can choose to change them to whatever you want Right. But a lot of the times in order to do that, you need to distance yourself, or at least I did, from the habits that I didn't want to continue with. Right. So if you're an alcoholic and you continue to go to bars, it's going to be really hard for you to, to overcome that addiction. Right. So if you're trying to change the habits, you have to step away from the people that have those habits or at least distance yourself from them so that you can decide for yourself, okay, I don't like this habit, but what do I want it to look like? Right. And this was all the guidance that I was getting from spirit is just like, okay, now this is your next step. So if I wasn't making these decisions. Spirit was leading me in these decisions, um. right? It was just where the leadership comes in is following the guidance from spirit. Mm -hmm. right? And putting the actions in place because they can guide you 
just like a therapist or a psychotherapist or a psychiatrist can guide you all that they want. Or even your SEO guy can be like, here's my advice on how to do SEO. But if you don't follow through and take the actions, it doesn't matter what they tell you. Yes. <laughs> so my leadership came in in trusting my source and just being a doer. Mm. Like, I'm not one to just sit around on my thumb and dwiddle all day. Like, that's just not my style. So, if I mean, I will question it and we will have a conversation <laughs> if it doesn't make sense to me. But once I understand it or once I just accept that that's what I need to do, then I just do it. Yeah. So good. So, so good. And let's also um, unpack uh, your move, your, your, your courageous move, which is something that I can 100,000% relate to because when I didn't graduate from high school and just worked and was in a relationship and had no purpose, had no uh, plan to, to do anything like what I'm doing today. But my one step of courage was moving to a place where no one knew who I was and I can start all over and I can figure it out. And I gave myself an opportunity. So that's something huge. It is huge because a lot of people feel the urge, but they won't take the action on it. Right. So, I mean, really, I didn't really think about it at the time. And the more people ask me about it and the way I'm feeling with it right now, as you're asking me about it, is it was monumental. Mm -hmm. I lived in Phoenix for 19 years. That is where my life was. I had this business that I'd built that I'd spent my, you know, my blood, sweat and tears in for 10, 11 years. And all of a sudden I'm selling my house and I'm closing my business. And I mean, I worked on thousands of people. I had thousands of clients in Phoenix and all of a sudden it's bye. Like, in six months. Wow. And then on top of that, my dog ended up with a brain tumor and I had to put her down. So it was literally like a clean slate and start a new chapter. And so I came up here and I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know anybody. <laughs> I don't know of any restaurants. <laughs> like, right. like, what do I, okay, what do I do? Like, let's, find something. So luckily my apartment complex has a gym and they have some workout classes. And so I started doing that and meeting people there. And I would look up a different restaurant like every week or every other week and try different restaurants and, you know, just getting myself like, this is where I'm at and this is what I'm doing. So might as well just try and navigate it and figure it out. But there were definitely some time, some big times of loneliness mm. because, you know, I went from seeing four or five people a day and having that, not just the verbal communication, but the physical work and the energetic um, interactions with people every day. Right. Like four or five people a day. And now I barely know anybody and I'm not doing any work and I'm not having any of those interactions. And it's like, you know, it's kind of, it was kind of a lot to deal with. And I'm more of an extrovert introvert, like an extroverted introvert. So I love interacting with people. And so not having that was like, uh, mm. What do I do? Like, how do I expend all of these, all of this energy that I have? Right. But there's a lot of value in finding the struggle with boredom. Um, because when you're meant to really shift, I mean, this was a big shift for me. Right. So I needed the boredom in order to change the mental imprints and the mental habits and the neurological habits and 
to get myself to think and act and energize in a totally different way in order for me to transform. So, uh, you know, when they talk about transforming a lot, they talk about butterflies. And it was literally like I was going from, you know, middle chat, like second chapter to third chapter and just that transform, that complete transformation. So while it was challenging, it's very necessary when we have, when God tells us or when the spirit tells us that we have, or when we feel like we have a different mission to accomplish now, or that we're meant to do different things now, that requires us to do different things. And that requires us to deal and feel and, and think and operate differently. So I needed that empty space to be like, okay, so how do you want me to think, feel, act, like what, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. So, I mean, I spent a few months doing that. I opened my massage studio in Denver in September and then um, got introduced to uh, an entrepreneurial community in February and well, I first started writing my, my new book in January and then met this community in February. And I would not be here today without that community. So, uh, but it was really important because I had to tell spirit, like, these are the, if I'm going to, whatever community I'm going to join, like, these are my requirements. Right. And so when I went to this conference, it just checked off the spirit showed me all the check boxes. I was like, okay, here we go. Like, this is it. But they, they're amazing people. They're super supportive. They provide me all the resources and the mentorship that I've needed. And so without, I knew I needed a community, right? We all right. need a community. So what, so I challenged the audience with is what attributes do you want your community to have? And are you patient enough to wait for that community to come find you or for you to go find the right community for you before just jumping into any community. Powerful. So powerful. Thank you for even bringing that up because again, when we're going through these transitions of moving from one place to another, and when we're rebranding and re-putting out organizations and having some of those mindsets be challenged because, okay, we did it before and we had success and now we're in a new space. Like so many things could have been going, which I'm sure they were uh, in your mind to figure it out. Um, but I also want to talk about something that you said earlier, because I definitely want to just kind of, and I know personally some people that have lost uh, a child during their, yeah. their, 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 their process, right? Um, thank you for saying it, for being vulnerable. This is all about the honest, open, transparent call. And I know that some of my audience members and viewers will appreciate how were you, you know, I don't know how detailed you want to share, um, but what happened? What, how did your life transition and how did you get through that? Because for me, like I had a loss of my brother and I, I was in like total shock. My life just was an existence. It wasn't anything productive, useful or anything because I was stuck in that. And it took me a long time to say life is too short and I need to take my message with me. So was that something that happened for you? Share a little bit about that. So I love being transparent. Um, and this is a really important subject that I'm honored to be transparent with because so many people experience this kind of loss and they don't know how to process it and there's not enough people out there that are willing to talk about it and i do have it in my book and i had the father's permission to write it write about it in my book we're still really good friends um so the situation was um right after my second divorce a friend of mine and i started adding benefits to our relation to our friendship. And two weeks later, I was pregnant. 
So I'm still going through my second divorce. And now we have an unexpected pregnancy. And um, he was 25 years my senior and fixing to retire. And this was not, I didn't want kids. He didn't want kids at that age. And so it's not something either one of us wanted. Um, but spirit took care of it. It was an ectopic pregnancy. I didn't, at the time, I did not know how dangerous that was. Um, but they made me wait in the hospital while they were monitoring like several, I'm talking like six to eight hours of just sitting in the hospital while they're monitoring my vitals and, um, ended up him and I both ended up choosing to have the pregnancy removed. And, um, so that was like a 1 a.m. emergency surgery sort of situation. And they asked me if I wanted my other two removed. And I knew that I was not in an emotional state to be able to make that decision. So I didn't. And he even picked me up from the hospital the next day. Um, and I say this very carefully. And I really want people, I'm going to get emotional here. But I really want people to hear how important this was for me and to determine how they feel about it. So luckily for me, I was at the hospital dealing with this by myself. A lot of people are like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, I'm not. When you are by yourself, you have full rights to just let it out without thinking about somebody else being worried about you. Hmm. And so I used the hospital to just let all of my emotions out. Just let, I didn't know what I was feeling. All I knew is that I had this living being, you know, six weeks old, if you want to, depending on your definition, but I, you know, in all essence, I had this living thing inside my body and it was, and I was going through this process of having it removed. And it, it is technically a child, I guess. Also, depending on your own definition, not getting into anything controversial. But emotionally speaking, that is what is happening to me. And so all of these emotions came up. And so I really wanted, since I was there by myself, I really wanted to just let it all out and just full on bear it, cry as hard as I needed to, just, I didn't care who heard me, I didn't care whatever, I just let it all out. That way, when I left the hospital, I could leave it all there. And when I get home, I've got clear, clean space to heal and rest and process everything that I went through. So for me, I was happy I was by myself so I could let it all go. Some people need the support, but that's just work. That's just how it worked for me. And then um, because I was able to do that, all the emotions out, then I could focus on the logic and the understanding and the spiritual purpose. I had made a contract that I didn't want kids in this life. Right. So it likely wasn't going to be come to fruition. Right. Because we have that spiritual contract. Also, that child wasn't meant to be born to me. Therefore, I would rather that child for the own child's benefit. I would rather it be born to the mother it's meant to be born to. Right. There's a lot of meaning for me in it. And so I did reach out to the dad and it took him a couple of weeks to be able to talk about it because he felt really guilty about putting me through this and all the things. And I was like, I gained empathy. Life is all about learning and going through experiences. This is, we're spiritual beings living on a human environment. 
And we're here to learn as much as we can in order to us to grow more and ascend as spiritual beings. So if this is something that I needed to experience in order to learn a deeper depth of grieving, a deeper depth of love, a deeper depth of empathy. Before this, I had sympathy for other people that have lost a child. Now I have empathy. Mm -hmm. That to me is more valuable than anything else. And by me sharing it with him this way allowed him to heal, which allowed us to still be friends. So nine years later, we're still friends. We're still in connection. We still care about each other. We still have each other's best interests, right? So it's all about how you choose to go through it. I always recommend to my clients, especially my female clients, if you're still grieving about something, set up a space, set up a time and a space where you're by yourself. You have a nice hot bubble bath with some Epsom salt and a glass of wine or whatever it is that you drink, but the house is completely empty and you just pour your heart out and you get those emotions out. You do the grieving. You just empty out your heart of all the feelings that you're, that you're still holding on to so that you can release those and move on because it's not serving you. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much again for sharing. Um, again, I, I know that our listeners are going to hear that and really be able to have a sense of hope that they can get through it if they have experienced it, if they know someone who experienced it, just finding that at no fault of anyone, you know, we are presented with these challenges for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you let it all out that at the hospital, you came back home and you now dealt with it and kind of wrote everything down and kind of let those words tell you why this was happening and what can you now do with this information? So seeing you, I think you spoke at Tina Kaddish's um, event. Was that correct? I don't know who Tina is. Oh my goodness. Because we were actually, <laughs> and I think I said that to you the same time uh, when we spoke one-on-one -on -one because um, that, that was, she had a, um, a summit back in January 27th. And I think we spoke like right afterwards and you told me that story. And I think I had mentioned with you that there were moms that were sharing their loss of their child and in different areas, different timelines, different ages. And how did they overcome? And, you know, we never get over it. It's still part of our story. It's still part of who we are. But how do we deal with the emotions when we're still here on earth and we still hit, have a life purpose and we're still in our mission? Like everything that we go through has a space to be handled with and then to kind of put it to rest where, again, if it doesn't serve us, why hold on to it? Yeah, like how can you use that, right? So I was literally being rolled into the merge into the OR by the nurse that prepped me, and she was sharing how she lost hers at six months. Mm. And as I'm being rolled into the operating room to remove this pregnancy, I felt more sympathy for her, more empathy for her than I did for myself, because at six months. You're so excited for it. You got names picked out. You've got the nursery being designed if it's not already done. Everybody knows about it. Like you're planning the baby shot, like the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. And her and her husband wanted it. Like I there's different low. I can't understand that kind of grief with it, but it's all about what are you going to do with this information? You've been put through this transformation. You've been th put through this situation. 
what information, what emotions, what compassion, what empathy did you learn that you can use to help somebody else or to help further the mission that you're on in this life? That is leadership. Absolutely. Whether you use that in business, like I am now, whether you just use it in your personal life to help your family and friends grieve through the process, whatever that looks like for you, take the leadership, find the new mindset, find the new emotions and figure out how to use it to your benefit and other people's benefit. Absolutely. Well, this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much for bringing your story here to building a leadership mindset, the power that you have within you and the journey that you have walked. It has been just, again, like you said, monumental, the whole journey, the good, the bad, the ugly, the the not so good, you know, all of that. Um, and, and you still walk through it and you're here today and you're here to serve yes. your community. So tell us how we, how we can reach you. What do you have going on? Um, if anything's coming up and a tad more of how you help. Yes. So I help people get in touch with their spirit, with their intuition, with their higher selves and whatever is above and beyond that for them. There's no judgment on my end. I just want you to get into alignment with yourself and to alignment with whatever you believe in so that you can operate from within and operate from your spirit, from what sets your spirit on fire. So tomorrow I have a stress, uh, from stress to success, spiritual tools for financial well-being uh, from noon to 1.30 if anybody wants, uh, is interested in that. Um, I have a multicultural trauma summit coming up on April 24th. So we're going to have Hispanic, uh, Italian, BIPOC, Nigerian, European, and American talking about trauma from the different cultures and mm. the obstacles that we overcame. And um, what did that look like for our individual communities from our experience and what we did to overcome all of that? So I feel like that's going to be super powerful. So any business leader, mindset coach, anybody that works with multicultural audiences <laughs> should come to this summit and listen to the different to the different. There's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences. And um, so, yeah, that's what I have coming up. And I have a monthly to be revealed live show where I talk with people and they share their spiritual journey. What does spirituality mean to them? What does that journey look like? What obstacles did they have to come up, overcome in their spiritual journey? And what do they want to leave the audience with? I am so excited for you. Definitely send me the, the specs on that so we can add it to the show notes and get people connected with you and what you do and just continue to bring life into people every way that you can with all those characteristics that you shared with us today, because that's what leadership is. It's leading from the front. It's taking these topics and making something happen with them so that people are taking action implementing it and moving forward into their purpose. Wendy, you have been absolutely phenomenal. Thank you again, everyone for tuning in. Definitely connect with this beautiful soul uh, for <laughs> sure. She is just fabulous at what she does and how she does it so well. Thank you all. Have a great day. And as I always say, make it count. Bye.